Okay, I think you can very, very easily uh, understand what's going on with cystic fibrosis, if I can explain it properly. As you know, cells, like you see here, have a nucleus, cytoplasm. They have things along their uh, surface uh, membranes called channels. There's a channel for chloride, there's a channel for sodium, there's a channel for potassium. And these channels uh, are dependent on proteins for proper function. In the case of the chloride channel, there is a protein called CFTR, cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator protein. Well, let's say you had a genetic disease and CFTR could not be made or work and therefore your calcium channel didn't work. What does that mean? Well, it means your chloride can't get out and it means your chloride can't get in. So it builds up on the inside of the cell and whatever is on the outside can't get back in to be reabsorbed. And that's the process. That's the pathophysiology of cystic fibrosis. You have in a normal person a normal CFTR making a normal epithelial chloride channel just like you have the ENAC or the epithelial sodium channel. You also have a epithelial chloride channel, only it's not called ENAC like sodium, it's called CFTR. And the normal sweat gland uh, has CFTR working, so you can have free passage uh, from chloride back and forth. With cystic fibrosis uh, in the sweat gland, the channel is blocked, and therefore there's decreased luminal chloride resorption. So because chloride goes with sodium, you now have a hypertonic sweat, and therefore that hypertonic sweat is making your mucus that lies along the surface of that cell become more thickened as well, because hypertonic mucus is thick mucus, and it can plug up the whole gland. If it plugs up the whole gland, it blocks the gland. If it blocks the gland, you can get infections. And that's exactly what happens with cystic fibrosis. I'll look at another little diagram again. Here's your normal cell, chloride, sodium going normal back and forth. And uh, because the chloride can come back in, the mucus doesn't get too thick, and therefore everything passes along nicely. But look at this darker, thicker mucus, because the mucus is hypertonic, because the chloride can't get back in. This mucus is going to plug the sweat gland, it's going to plug the lungs, it's going to plug the gastrointestinal system. And as you know, one of the big principles of pathology is if tubular structures of any type are obstructed or plugged or blocked by anything, you are then setting up the background for infection. And cystic fibrosis uh, people die of infections. Uh, it's a complex genetics. There's a more than 800 mutations. but uh, and I hate to get into things that are so complex, but if you just remember the primary problem is uh, decreased CFTR with the ultimate uh, the process of mucus becoming more viscid or hyperviscidosis, mucoviscidosis. People can actually have various expressions of it all the way from a normal if a person is going to have the mildest expression of it, he's going to have azoospermia, at least males will, simply because you don't have a vas deferens uh, is the mildest expression of the disease. In the more serious ends of the other end of the spectrum, you have sinusitis, lung disease, bronchiectasis is getting worse, uh, macomium ileus, all the way up to full-blown severe bronchiectasis, pancreatic insufficiency, cirrhosis, and the whole underlying process of all these things we just mentioned result ultimately from ducts, glands, tubular structures being blocked with too much mucus, becoming inflamed, becoming infected, becoming fibrotic. So this is the spectrum. And of course, um, no matter how mild the expression is, there will always be, you know, increased chlorides in the sweat, and that's the test for cystic fibrosis, it's sweat chlorides. Um, when you look at the organs themselves, grossly and microscopically, 
even though we think of cystic fibrosis as uh, being a pulmonary disease, really the pancreas probably is even more uh, eminently involved and you, because it's exocrine gland and cystic fibrosis is a disease of exocrine glands because of the blocking you have in inflammation, infection, fibrosis. The islets are not affected. In the liver, you have plugging of the bile canaliculi for the same reason, portal inflammation, perhaps scarring due to biliary cirrhosis. In uh, genitalia, there's almost always absence of vas deferens, so um, males are infertile. And the sweat glands will have a normal histology. Because why? Because there's not much uh, mucus uh, uh, in the surface of a, a muc lumen of a sweat gland, is there? But nevertheless, they will have increased chlorides. Here's a um, pancreas. Actually, you don't even know it's a pancreas. It just looks like a bunch of scar tissue with some glandular or acinar structures on the middle. Here's some fat. Here's some ducts, extra lobular ducts in the pancreas with thick mucus. Because there's been so much infection, inflammation and fibrosis secondary. It's a very, very scarred pancreas. And of course, this is the normal pancreas for comparison. Not much fibrosis except in the septae, uh, no mucus in the extra, um, in the larger ducts, and uh, a nice lobular and acinar architecture with a very minimal amount of uh, fibrous tissue uh, between the lobules and the uh, acinar. Uh, the lung, of course, is the uh, part of cystic fibrosis that is associated with the most mortality. And in the lung, uh, most of the patients that die with cystic fibrosis die of lung infection because of viscous, viscous bronchial mucosa, mucus plugging. And if you want to remember, uh, particularly if it's a child, uh, hemophilus, which of course is the single biggest uh, organism involving upper and lower respiratory tract in kids, but in addition, remember Staph aureus and Pseudomonas. So these are the three biggie bacteria infecting that mucus uh, in cystic fibrosis, Staph aureus, Pseudomonas, Pseudomonas Haemophilus. And because of the bronchus, uh, bronchial plugging, there's bronchiectasis dilatation of the bronchial lumen, scarring of the bronchial wall. I'm going to show you a picture now of lungs, and you're, I think, going to be shocked. Was, uh, if you've seen a few lungs, you could say, my God, how could this be lung? Look at this. Here is the larynx. Here's the uh, trachea. Here's the major bronchi. And look at all of these little pus pockets. They look green, so I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if this is Pseudomonas. It could be Staph or Haemophilus. And look at how these lungs are no longer aerated and crepitant. They are infected. They're thick. They're filled with pus. They have inspissated mucus, and they have secondary infection. This is a classical gross appearance for the cystic fibrosis lung. Here are technically all the organs that could be involved. We talked about lung. We talked about pancreas. You know, for the same reason, you can have blocked up of the bile ducts uh, because of the uh, chloride problem in the liver. So that could give rise to hepatic uh, inflammation, blockage, fibrosis, infection, ultimately uh, cirrhosis in the most severe uh, end of the spectrum, blocking of the small intestine, the gallbladder, and of course, uh, in the genitalia, uh, all the patients have uh, absence of vas deferens, too, for the same reason. The sweat glands may be there, and they're not blocked or infected or, uh, because of the uh, lack of mucus. But I guarantee you, if you put that little uh, patch over the skin and ran your little current, you're going to find that there's increased chlorides there, which is, of course, the diagnostic test. Uh, the diagnosis is both clinical with the classical gastrointestinal and sinus infections. Uh, the fact that there's increased uh, chlorides in the sweat. You can also do a test where you put uh, measure a potential difference in the nasal mucosa, maybe a little more sensitive, all the way down to DNA analysis, gene sequencing. Find out the actual gene that's missing as to why that CFTR is not being made. Uh, the median life expectancy of cystic fibrosis is only 30 years. More than half the people you know, die in their uh, teens, 20s. Uh, a lot of them aren't even diagnosed until they're adults. Of course, these would be the ones that are the least severe. And of course, the general concept is to keep those pulmonary secretions uh, 
clear, not to let the mucus build up. And uh, I think probably one of the most common reasons for a, uh, a lung transplant would be a younger person that has cystic fibrosis. Um, liver and pancreas transplants are also done as well. Okay, we're done with the uh, big disease. We already ran a little bit over. Let's do SIDS and tumors uh, in the home stretch here. Bye-bye.